Well, isn't that wonderful, ladies and gentlemen? That's already gone out on Twitter, just in case you're wondering. Well. <laughs> I didn't know I was up for a solo this morning. And I don't even know that one. <laughs> mm. Well, Colossians chapter 1, please. It's good to see you. Glad you're here this morning. I hope the Lord has blessed you, and I know you have plans for Thanksgiving. Some of our folks are already uh, beginning those plans. A lot of folks, are schools out all week long this week? Are they out this week? So, um, you know, folks are already traveling. If you're going to travel, please be careful. Watch out for the other guys, what they used to say a year's gone by uh, before um, I took my family overseas and we really learned what that meant. And folks, uh, I'm telling you, uh, we don't realize those laws of physics that come into play when we get behind the steering wheel of a car. But they're very real, and so please be careful if you travel anywhere at all during this week. Well, here we are in Colossians chapter 1. I'm going to read three verses of Scripture, beginning at verse 12. And here in this passage, Paul is praying for us that we'll learn some things, and uh, that some things will become true about us as believers in Christ Jesus. And let's just pick up there at verse 12. We're only going to read three verses, 12, 13, and 14. Let's see what God says in his word today. Giving thanks to the Father who has qualified us to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in the light. He has delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us into the kingdom of the Son of his love in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins. Thank you for this rich and powerful passage of scripture, Heavenly Father. And I pray you'll give me the ability to articulate this message to your glory Thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. You can be seated. There was a time some time ago that a couple of men were crossing through a pasture and they came up on a bull. How many of y'all ever been chased by a bull before? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, these two men found themselves not just in front of a bull, but this was an angry bull. This was a raging bull. And this bull suddenly began charging after them and running. So they looked for the nearest fence and they headed straight for that nearest fence. Running with everything they had. Hearing the thunder of the hoofbeats behind them as that bull closed and came closer and closer. One of the men looked at his friend and said, pray, John, pray. John said, I don't know how to pray in public. He said, pray, John, pray. He said, well, then I'll pray. The only thing I ever learned as a child, Heavenly Father, for what we are about to receive, we are truly thankful. I want to tell you something this morning. You have received something from the Lord. And you need to be thankful for those things that you have received from the Lord. And this morning I'm going to show you three reasons to be thankful that come straight from this passage of Scripture. So follow this with me, if you will, in verse 12. Number one, be thankful that God has made you fit. Now, if you have the King James Version, you have the word meet, M-E-E-T, there. If you have the New King James, you have qualified, and other versions may have different words. But the word fit is appropriate. Now, I realize I probably shouldn't be talking about being fit 
<laughs> right here at the holidays. In fact, I stepped on the scales this morning, and they looked up at me and said, you ain't fit, boy. And so I just kind of stepped off quickly because I know they're lying to me anyway. But I want you to know something. This word here carries something special and significant for us that we need to understand. This first word qualified, the one that the New King James Version uses, is a word that describes what happens with an athlete. And you know, you saw this this past summer with the Olympics when they took people and they prepared those people and they had those qualification swims and qualification runs and qualification shooting tournaments and qualification for soccer and, and so on and so forth and all of that together. But then when they got there to uh, Rio and, and to Brazil and they began there with their qualification, with their tournaments and with their runs and their track meets and the other things that they had, they had to pass certain tests to be sure that they were qualified and they deserved the medals that they received. Sadly, there were a few times, just a few, when you consider the hundreds of uh, athletes that were competing, just a few times that people were disqualified for performance enhancing drugs. And uh, that's always a sad thing, but, but it does happen. Folks, through the Lord Jesus Christ, you have been qualified in his presence. But there's another meaning to that word. It's not just qualified. It's the word enable. And you have not only been qualified, but you have been able, enabled to participate in the things that God has for you. The, there are these fancy dinners that we read about and some of you perhaps have participated in. I'm talking about the black tie events where the men have their tuxedos and the women in their nice evening gowns and they meet in these banquet halls or these ballrooms and <clears throat> everything is elegant and everything is beautiful. On occasion, I have run into those individuals downtown. And I've seen them coming out, ladies with their minks on their shoulders and, and, and uh, diamonds, or at least, you know, they look like diamonds, hanging from their necklaces. And, and uh, uh, the men in the finery that they're wearing, walking together, heading into this event or that event. And, you know, it would be nice just to follow them in one time, but there's something that impedes my entrance into that that place. Even if I had on the finest of tuxedos that you could wear, and folks, I've worn every style there is, including the long tails that I've had to wear for events before. There's something that stands in the way. Those individuals that participate in those kinds of events have had, they have received in a few weeks past a, a, an invitation. And on that invitation it said RSVP. And y'all speak French, you know what it says and what that means. You have to call them up and tell them you're coming. So your name will be on the list. And you take that invitation in your hand and you go up to the door and you tell that individual, this is, this is Dr. Kevin and Mrs. Scherer and we're here with, for this event. If my name and Pam's name does not appear on that list, then we can't pass. But if our name were to be on that list, then we would be enabled to participate in the event. Ladies and gentlemen, the Lord Jesus Christ gave you an invitation. 
And when you respond to that invitation, he enables you to be a participant in the things that he has. He qualifies you to be a participant. The word uh, that they use here is the word uh, uh, partaker. And you become a partaker of the Lord's inheritance. I want you to know something. This is beautiful, ladies and gentlemen. God has written every believer present into his will. You're in the Lord's will. I've tried to get on some of y'all's wills after you get at that surgery and they give you that happy juice, but you're still sane enough you know better than to tell me okay. But I, you know, it's, these things are nice and beautiful, but the will that God has, you see the inheritance that God wants to give us. Let me remind you of a verse of scripture that tells us the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Can I say that to you in plain English? The earth is the Lord's and everything in it is the Lord's. It's all His. The world may have title deeds to this piece of property and that piece of property and I have my 14 point something acres up there in Jones County and some of y'all have your acreage in different places but I want you to know the real title holder is the Lord God Himself. And folks, we're in His will. People talk about this this gold find and that oil find. Did y'all see they found a new oil field in Texas? $900 billion worth of oil. I wish they'd just tie that over here, don't y'all? Wouldn't that be wonderful? Folks, listen to me. God's written us into his will. He's got a whole lot more than that, doesn't he? Our God is faithful and there's, he's good. But oh, I got to tell you this. There was a time you were not fit. There was a time you were not qualified. There was a time you were not able to participate in the things of God. Your sin disqualified you. You had not responded to the invitation that makes you able to enjoy what God gives. You had not said yes to the Lord Jesus Christ. You had not repented of your sin and turned to him and believed upon him. You followed your own will. You followed the course of darkness and you were not fit. You were not qualified. You were not able to be part of what I'm speaking about. But through Jesus we're fit. But not only that, we can be thankful that not only are we fit, God has made us free. Look at verse 12, verse 13. He has delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us into the kingdom of the Son of his love. I cannot paint for you a more wonderful picture than what the Holy Spirit has done here. Because you see, ladies and gentlemen, the Holy Spirit of the living God stormed the fortress of evil where you were held prisoner. The Holy Spirit of the living God marched himself into the slave market of sin where you were standing on the slave blocks chained up ready to be sold to the next dastardly dominion of evil to come your way. And he bought you out of that and he rescued from you from that and he pulled you out of that and he brought you into a different place. I can't tell you a better, a better picture than that. The Lord God has rescued you. The Lord God has delivered you. And if you don't yet realize what I'm talking about, just hold on for just a second, please, and let me show you and learn what Christians are freed from. You're freed from the power of darkness. And the word power here is the word for authority, exousia. This is the truth that I need you to grasp this morning. Before you repent and believe the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, before you have turned away from sin and trusted on the Lord Jesus Christ, you were under the legal and spiritual authority 
of the dominion of the kingdom of darkness. And the devil had dominion over your life. You say, I do whatever I want to. I'm going to show you in a minute that you don't. Based on Adam's curse, he had legal rights to you. Because the wages of sin is death. And you are compelled to live under that authority. But hold on. Because when Jesus comes into your life, when by an act of your own will and your own faith, you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, you're freed from being, not just from being under the power of the devil, you're freed from being a prisoner of sin. Now I told you I was going to show you about that, so I want you to look over at Romans 6 for a moment. Romans chapter 6, there's just a little verse of scripture there in Romans 6, and if you ever dominate Romans 6 in your mind, if you ever, if you ever get that into your spirit, the entire chapter of Romans 6, you will be on a different level of Christian living, I promise you. Romans 6 and verse 16, the Lord speaks to us so very clearly. And he says something that you can't get away from and I cannot get away from. Look at 16. Romans 6, 16. Do you not know that to whom you present yourselves slaves to obey, you are that one slaves whom you obey, whether of sin leading to death or of obedience leading to righteousness. Ladies and gentlemen, when a person has yet to come to the Lord Jesus Christ, I do not care what they think of themselves or what that sin may be. They are slaves to that sin and they must obey the dominion, the demon, the, the devil, that, that is, is the one who's pushing that in their lives. The carnal nature as well. Your flesh, your sinful nature. You are chained to that and you must obey it and you must follow it wherever it says it wants to take you. But wait a minute. Someone's coming. And his steps are on the door. And he has the payment to free you. And he comes to free you from being a prisoner. He takes those chains off. He opens the castle doors. And he says, follow me. Come on with me. But it gets even better. Because not only does it free you from the power of darkness and from being a prisoner to sin. You're freed from the penalty and the pain of guilt and judgment. And how many times has your mind condemned you? I was talking to someone recently about, about past sins. And they're there. They're before me. Things I did when I was young is be are, are before me. Things that I'll never share with you from this pulpit or even in private are before me, <clears throat> in my mind. And when I see people participating in certain things, I remember, I remember the sorry things that I did. But there's no guilt there and there's no condemnation there because my Lord Jesus freed me from that. 
And my Lord Jesus took that from me. And I'll never brag about it. And I'll never dwell on it. I'll just live as though I'm free from it. Amen? Because that's what he's done in our lives at that time. Now that's enough. I'm telling you that's good all by itself. But I want you to know that God takes you from some place to some place. He doesn't just take you out and say, now do the best you can. There are churches that teach that. You come on out. Jesus, Jesus will save you. Now you got to do the best you can to get along. I want you to know that's not scripture. And that's not what God does. He took you from somewhere to be somewhere. And that's what he's done in our lives right now because he took us from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light, to the kingdom of his son. Isn't that wonderful? From the power of darkness to the kingdom of his son. That's what he's done in our lives. Now whatever your role was in the kingdom of darkness, that's history. It was expunged from your account. The New King James Version uses the word convey. I believe King James uses the word translated. Either of those words are as good as you can find. But the long and short of it is, when you come to Jesus Christ, you have been given a royal ride. <laughs> and you have left one kingdom for another kingdom, ladies and gentlemen. And it happened just like that. That quickly. How precious and wonderful. So be thankful today that you've been made free. Be thankful today that you've been made fit. But look at our text again in Colossians 1 because he's done something else for us in whom we have redemption through, the, through his blood, the forgiveness of sins. Be thankful today that God declared you to be forgiven in the Lord Jesus Christ. I got to give you two very strong words right here. Two beautiful words. The first word is redemption. In whom we have redemption. The word redemption is a word that means to recall captives from captivity through the payment of ransom. Mark 10, 45, the Lord Jesus said he gave himself to be a ransom for many. Ladies and gentlemen, that's what the Lord has done. It's the payment of a ransom. Now the ransom price for your sin and for my sin, the ransom price for your freedom today, the ransom price, price for you to be in the presence of Almighty God was the shed blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Ever since the Lord shed that first, the blood of that first lamb when he made coverings for Adam and Eve, ever since that time the Lord has required blood. And without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. There's no forgiveness of sin. And the ultimate price was paid through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. They took him to Calvary. They nailed him to the tree. His blood poured out for you. It fell to the ground, each drop crying out, it is finished, it is finished, it is finished. To pay the ransom, the devil lapping up every drop of it he could, thinking that he was winning the battle, not realizing that God Almighty was paying a ransom for mankind. And he did it for you. The second word in here is the word forgiveness. In whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins. And the word forgiveness means to cause, to stand away. It means to release. I want to give you a picture of it if I can. It comes from the Old Testament. And it's a beautiful picture. I want you to imagine this, if you would, please, for just a moment. Try to imagine this in your mind. This is the Day of Atonement, which happens in late September, early October, according to our calendar. And on the Day of Atonement, in the Old Testament, in the time of the tabernacle, and even later in the time of the temple, but especially in the time of the tabernacle, those 40 years they were in the, in the wilderness wandering through, and those years after that, they would take two goats, 
And they would take one of those goats, and over that goat they would confess all of the sins of the nation of Israel in a given year. And the, the priest would lay his hands, and only the high priest could touch that goat. And he would lay his hands on that goat, and he would confess everything that pertained, that he knew of uh, uh, in that year, about the nation's sins, about every sin that nation of Israel had committed he would confess it over that goat and they'd tie a rope around that goat's neck and they would head, head out into the wilderness with that goat that other goat, that second goat, they would cut that goat's throat and they would drain that blood and they would take that blood with hyssop and go into the Holy of Holies and sprinkle it onto the mercy seat. But it's that first goat that I want you to see right now. That first goat, the one that's caused to send away, the one that's taken away, caused to be released, that's the goat that's important in this story right now because that goat, ladies and gentlemen, is called the scapegoat. And that goat is the goat that, that had all of the sins confessed over it. They would take it out into the wilderness and they would turn that thing loose as far away from the camp as they could possibly turn it away and tell it to never come back again. If that goat turned around and started back into the, into the camp again, they would catch that goat and they'd find a ravine and they'd throw that goat down down into the ravine. If that goat tried to get up out of that ravine, then they'd get a big old stick and they'd break that goat's leg and they'd throw that goat back down in there again because those sins could never come back again. And ladies and gentlemen, God took you and set you free and he sent your sins away. Now you see why you need to be thankful. When God says he forgave you, oh, the price he paid through the blood of Jesus. And as far as the east is from the west, he has removed our sins, our transgressions from us. There was a young man, seminary student, in Evanston, Illinois, which is up by Lake Michigan. And he was down in one late September. And y'all don't know this, but it's cold in Michigan in September. Isn't that right? <laughs> it's chilly up there, especially on that lake. Sometimes it snows. And this boat was out there, had several people on it, and started sinking. Well, this young seminary student waded out in that frigid water and he rescued one, then two, then three, and back and back and back he went until finally he had rescued 17 people by himself off of that boat and brought every one of them safe back to the shore. But the seminary student became very ill. And before long, he died. And at his funeral, they said, this young man was responsible for saving 17 lives. And not one of them came back and said thank you to him. Not one. Ladies and gentlemen, if there's one thing that hurts the heart of God today, it's a Christian that doesn't remember to say thank you for having been, for your having been saved and redeemed by the blood of his son. Nothing breaks his heart more than a thankless, murmuring, grumbling believer. Nothing whatsoever. He'll ignore the grumblings of the world, but when one of his children began to grumble, my, oh my, oh my, he gets a little bit upset. 
Nothing hurts him more than that. Today and this week and this Thursday, when you sit down with your family and you say thank you, you remember to thank him because you've been made fit and you're now part of his family. To say thank you that you have been made free and to say thank you because he declared you to be forgiven in the name of his son, Jesus Christ. Father in heaven, I pray that you'll use these words, these simple words this day. And I pray, Heavenly Father, that we'll understand them more clearly than we ever have. And I want to ask you, Heavenly Father, that this morning, in this time, you will make this invitation one that blesses your name, one that honors you. We need you, Father. We need you today. If you've never come to Christ Jesus, if you've never by an act of your own will turned away from your sin and placed your faith in the Lord Jesus this morning, I want you to tell him, Lord Jesus, I need you in my life. I want to turn from my sin. Please come into my heart. Please transform me. Please save me today. And thank you for doing it. If you pray that in your heart and you mean that in your heart, number one, God will hear you and God will save you. But number two, in a moment when we stand and we sing, you make your way down front where I am. You make your way here. And you tell me or somebody else that may be up here with me, Today I've received Christ Jesus. He's now my Lord and my Savior. And I want to obey Him. Father, it's your invitation. Be glorified, I ask you in Jesus' name.